we are getting ready to do our tribute to Mark Edward and Larry Keem. If we could have silence while we begin this tribute, please. And um, if my fellow group members will join me on stage. ceremony on behalf of Mark Edward, Terry Tyson. From shaman to the conjurers on a stage, from reasoned healers in a forgotten stone age, human communities to the youngster receiving their first set of plastic natural props. The magician's wand has remained as the symbol and the tool of the magician. It signifies their power and it focuses their magical energy. The wand, when held aloft, symbolizes as above, so below. When passed over an empty vessel, it commands it to be filled. When pointed, it directs magic to affect a person, place, or object. When seen by others, it identifies its owner as the wielder of mysterious abilities. The wand may appear to be made of highly polished wood, whether branch from some unknown species of tree, made glossy from the magician's hand, a rare, a rare crystal adorned with cryptic markings, a merely length of bone derived from some unknown beast. The modern conjurer often holds a black rod, white on its tips, but for a magician such as Mark, it is proper that it has a configuration that infuses many worlds, that of the mysterious and that of the practical. It is made of wood, copper, and crystal. Mark embraced the mystical and the real world. Most magicians would tell you that when a wand is broken, his magic is dispelled, but I believe that even pieces of a wand retain some magic still, perhaps only in our memory, in our imagination. So it is that we will break the wand to, relieve, to release some of it to the universe, but also for all of us to hold on to. Join him in the collective consciousness of the cosmos. May his energy remain perhaps altered, but also always <coughs> present. To a magicae whom levant in materium, may your magic live forever. Abracadabra, I create as I speak. Uh oh. So this year has been a particularly tough year for all of us that knew these two people. Um, I'm going to say a few words about both. Mark and I had an interesting relationship. Um, I've been reviewing his products for over 20 plus years, and I knew him via emails, 
Uh, I'm not your typical reviewer. I would pick up a copy of something or something that he sent and I would actually work with it and call and ask follow-up questions. And he was always very cordial and very prompt. Um, over 20 years, I developed a relationship with him, never met him until East Coast Spirit Sessions. And to my delight, when I walked up and introduced myself, his eyes got about that big and I think he was as uh, happy to see me as I was to see him in person. And, uh, and wonderfully uh, appropriate as far as I was concerned, we wound up having dinner that very night and I found that he was everything I thought he was going to be and more. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we just picked up right where we left off and that was Mark and I was so looking forward to this until I got the phone call from, um, from Susan. So may his soul rest in peace. Larry, all of us have felt his loss, uh, but being the kind of person that I am, uh, I tend to take a bigger picture look at this, and for me, his loss is the last pillar of what I used to call my stone hedge of mentors. I was fortunate. My stone hedge of mentors included Max Maven, Eugene Berger, Phil Wilmar, Larry White, Ed Solomon, and of course, Larry. His passing means that those pillars are gone, except that they rest in here and in all of us. And in that sense, they will never be gone. Um, but it's very challenging to realize that suddenly the pillars that I leaned on for over 20 years and that brought me up as a pup in, a, in what we do as opposed to just magic um, are all gone, although they are, as I say, living in my heart. The other reason this particular week is difficult for me, and I'm not minimizing anything that, any, that you all are feeling, I'm simply sharing. This week marks the beginning of the last three conversations that I had with Larry. Um, I had just published Meaningful Conjuring, the works of Ed Solomon, and he had gotten the book and we were talking about it. Uh, it was 10 years worth of his work, and he was delighted to see that uh, the novels would continue, and he said, you know, it's too bad uh, I won't have something like this when I'm gone. I said, why? I, I'll do something. I mean, I can't write in your voice because I don't know your character enough, as opposed to the novelist. But we can certainly do something. Uh, you know, the uh, traveler's last trip, uh, traveling to the unknown, and we kicked it around and decided that, in fact, uh, I should do something. And I said, okay. And then uh, I said, I've got, in that moment I was preparing the lecture that you all saw today, The Magic Circle. So I was, that was my next thing on my table. And so got through Thanksgiving, got home after Christmas, or not, before, not after Christmas, after my trip, called him, and he was in the middle of all this Christmas stuff. And he goes, let's pick it up in January. These are the things that we had talked about this week. And he said, yes, and you want these specific things. And I said, yes, and I want to add this. And he goes, okay, so we'll talk about it in January and that conversation. However, the book will happen. I feel a tremendous responsibility in part of my reflections over the last six or seven months to continue their work. I'm not going to try to fill their shoes, that would be impossible. But I am committing to everyone here to continue everything I can to move forward the spirit that they talked about, to make sure that someone always has access 24 hours a day to someone that can bounce ideas off scripting ideas, concepts in a safe place. And what I mean by a safe place is whatever is said to the group that I will form uh, will stay within that group. And no one's stealing ideas, no one's going to be stealing concepts, and we're going to try to make it as collaborative as Ed and, um, and Mary made it. A little bit about the book and then I'll step off. The book at this point, in my, the way I framed it in my head, will have a title something along The Last Travels or Travel into the Unknown. 
Um, and my concept at this point is, we'll talk a little bit about him, his early years. There are three tricks of his that he specifically wanted. Uh, there's one trick that I worked with him. Uh, it's the last conversation we had, actually. Uh, and then I'm going to open it up to anecdotes and or probably seven or eight tricks from you. So somehow, thanks to Susan and Andrew, I will get that information to you. My, my goal is to, by this time next year, to have it done. Shelley has agreed to do the copy editing since she understands his voice and can make sure that we have some continuity there. Um, so the more I can put it together, I'll let you know, but don't expect any information until after the first of the year just because of the commitments both Shelley and I have. So I thank you in advance for any help that you can give me, any anecdotes, anything that you want to share. Uh, and the only other thing I can say is I promise them but I'll do everything I can to be there for all of you. Thank you. I am going to read a tribute to Larry by Scott Davis. If you were here at Magistorum last year, you will remember that we did a seance reunion featuring Scott Davis, Larry Keene, Terry Tyson, Mark's drivings, and Mark Edward. And two of them are gone now, so uh, <clears throat> Scott couldn't make it, but he asked that we read uh, a tribute to Larry that he wrote. <coughs> Larry Keen was a friend in magic and a friend in life. We first met at Tony Andrews's Invocational in 1984. Our shared interest in spirit magic and our offbeat senses of humor helped us form a sturdy and lasting friendship. When seance was in the formative stage, Larry was an enthusiastic, AKA the traveler. When I moved away from magic, Larry refused to let me be. He sent me copies of his books, audio cassettes, CDs, and beautifully handcrafted props. He called regularly to just say hey, share the latest gossip, and inform me of the steady demise of our old friends and colleagues from what we call the golden age of mentalism and bizarre magic. In the winter of 2023, Larry called with a proposal. He wanted to put together a small seance reunion at the Magistorum convention to support his friends, Andrew DeRyder and Susan Williams. There's a whole new generation, he told me, Seance is legendary. My initial response, total resistance. But Larry would not be deterred. Nope. <laughs> and he convinced me to attend. I'm so glad he did, because this was the last time I saw Larry do what he did, what he did so well. Mentor and encourage those who sought his advice and express his intense passion for our magical arts. It was also the last time I saw my friend. Thank you, Larry. May your memory be a blessing. Andrew will now present the award. Wow. Thank you, guys. Now, I didn't really know Larry very much. I knew him for about three years. He made a lot of phone calls to me and Susan. Sometimes inappropriate times, but it was always a few hours long because you could not stop talking. The amount of creativity that came out of his brain was just incredible. And he introduced me, I'm sad to say this, to the bizarre community. I knew about Seance uh, magazine and the hardcover book that it came that Scott put together. And what you guys don't know, after that email that Susan got, Scott sent more emails thanking Susan and I. And it's during the convention last year, he had such a good time. He had left the, the business and the community for kind of over a decade, maybe 20, 20 years or something. He disappeared. But when he came back, he felt accepted again. 
and just the generous person that he was, he had a book in his possession that was his copy of Seance before it got published. It was in binder form. And he said, here, take it. It gave me goosebumps, it gave me goosebumps. literally, it gave me goosebumps. I still have it, I'm gonna frame it. But uh, Larry was known for doing magic very uh, simplistic. He could take any object on a table and do something, a true mark of a wizard. I kept that in mind when I brought him ideas. I'm like, look at this trick, and he would be, nope, stupid, do it like this. <laughs> Literally back like that too. So I wanted to honor him, not just this year, every year, because he had a huge impact on my life. That's why I created the Chashki Award, the Traveler's Award. And I'm going to try to read it, but in true Larry fashion, some of it's in Latin. <laughs> and if you get a chance to Google it, it's pretty hysterical. Hopefully you all got one of the diplomas. Do the same thing with your diplomas. It reads, Know all ye, the supreme and exalted high council at Magistrorum Convention, which is Susan and I, <laughs> <clears throat> sorry, I meant to say Susan, bestow with highest honors in recognition the actus naturalis mysticus. This parchment hereby acknowledges the recipient at a true, as a true sorcerer, adept in the ancient arts of magic, the Traveler's Tchotchke Award. Be it known to all this, uh, be it known to all on this auspicious day, the Magistorum Convention bestows upon Jerry Blankenship the Traveler's Tchotchke Award 2024. Jerry, stand and be recognized. a well-deserved award, the very first Traveler's Shasky. Never to be forgotten. Congratulations, Sherry. You earned it. We'd all like to thank you for joining us to this tribute of two wonderful fallen friends that were both here for the very first Magistrorum and for that the last Magistrorum, but they will never be lost in memory. One more thing. Uh, if it wasn't for Larry, uh, this convention would not exist. Uh, I started a convention several years before this, and he decided uh, I should break that off. He convinced me to do this even though I didn't want to or couldn't afford to. Right? He said, if you're going to do it, you better do it now. So we sat around, we thought about it, and we said, yes, okay. But we wanted to make sure that all art forms were celebrated. And Here's what we have. Magistrorum actually means the professor of the dark arts teaching the students or anyone who wants to learn magic arts. In true Larry fashion, the word can never be spelled by anybody, <laughs> nor could it be pronounced correctly. So those of you who want to learn how to pronounce it, you have to roll your R's and I'm not going to even try. On that note, Again, we thank you for joining us for this tribute. If everyone will please exit the room, we'll return on a lighter note to celebrate some more bizarre and mentalism. Thank you. <laughs>